So, what is the AMS top-down design flow? If you think about the AMS top-down design flow with different blocks, you will quickly realize that they don't fall in order as a linear flow. It's a hierarchical flow, with essentially a whole bunch of loops. We start off here with the system specs in the upper left, the exploration part. Given the specs, someone comes up with an initial high-level behavioral model for that system saying, I think this is the way it is going to work. Then, based on those high-level models, someone builds some test benches and says okay, let's try to catch them out and see if it works as it should. We do some tests and get some nominal response, and it may or may not be working exactly as you expect. So, there can be some feedback, where you go back and update those high-level models, until you finally get this high-level set of models, we think is the right way to build this system. Once that's done, you take it down to the next level of detailed specification. In this section here, we have a detailed subsystem behavioral model. So, here each one of those high-level models, you essentially break down to, more specifically on what are the actual characteristics you want to have for this subsystem. And based on those, we also have some specs associated with that for this subsystem. Then, we may have to come up with some decent subsystem test benches, to verify these detailed subsystems behavioral models, so that it does, what it should be doing. Now, based on the results of those tests, we get some subsystem behavioral responses, and you can feed that back of any edits to get this subsystem working well. Then, repeat this up through the system level test benches, and see how the system response is, given these new more accurate detailed subsystem behavioral models. Next, once those are completed, or as to say they are being completed, they can be given to the designers, who can then actually develop the transistor or logic or standard cell design for that particular cell. Those designs you have been building, can be put to into the system level test benches, so that they can generate the subsystems a kit response. Therefore, this is essentially, the loop that's going on, and it's all the way going down. So once you get the response to the actual transistor level, then it's a matter of feeding back that response, either to update the transistor level designs to match the specs they want, or essentially within the specs and not exactly the same as what they wanted to see, update the subsystem behavioral models to match what has happened at the transistor level. So those updates that were made, can be fed back up to the system level test benches, and you can identify how those changes affected the system response. So, rather than flowing from top to bottom, or left to right, you kind of start at the upper left corner, then it flows all the way down to the bottom, then flows up back again, and ends up with the system response. The general issue here, is that when things get very very large, you are looking at a lot of subcells, you are working with a lot of different team that are working in parallel. And this is really the only way to get a lot of teams working in parallel in an effective fashion.